Hey guys, I did promise another video, so here's the situation that Donald Trump has caused at the border wall. Trump hasn't built very much of his so-called wall, and there goes messages on my phone. Um, Trump all went to invoke emergency powers, which will allow him to appropriate military funds and resources. That that funds for military and such, along with resources. That was um, yeah. Those funds were stolen by Donald Trump himself. I'm sorry, but yeah. Um. I'm just reading through here. Um, overall, Congress so far has approved some 1.7 billion in funding for 124 miles of new and replacement barrier. That's about all Donald Trump can do. Um, there was news of a, this is very sad news, a family that was trying to get to the border wall actually died, so condolences to the family members that are still alive of that family. That is actually very sad to hear and to actually know that Donald Trump has actually caused that, which means human rights law can actually come into effect along with treason against America and the whole world with his trade war with China, which um, I will get to soon. Um, there's not been much going on. Um, Trump wanted concrete, but is now talking about steel. Um, with concrete, just place a number of C4s and just blow it. With steel, same thing, really. Unless you want to use an angle grinder. Or if you have a military vehicle that you've actually stolen and, um, yeah. Oh, holy shit, I've just seen the prices. Let's just add the prices up for these prototypes. So, 3, 6, 5, 1, 2, 3, plus 4, 5, 8... One zero three. Oh, gee, there's nearly a million dollars US. Four five three five four eight. Well, there's one point two billion two million US. That's just from three prototype balls. Four zero six three one nine. Nearly one point seven million. Well, over two million, that's with five walls, can prototype walls, and how much they cost. Two point three million so far. That's for six. Two point eight wall, two point eight million, that's just for seven walls. And last number is four eight six four one one. Well, that put the spending of prototype walls over three million. Well, three point three of three million three hundred and thirty three thousand three hundred and eighty one dollars US. Who's footing that bill? You, the taxpayer. Yes, that's right. You, the taxpayer. You're footing that that bill. Um, Trump's first year in office saw the lowest numbers since 1971, and he is still lower in 2018 and 2019. Impressions um, on the US-Mexico border, total number of migrants. Um, an extra 2K above Obama, which actually had it going down. But when Trump took office, it was going down, but then it spiked back up. So Trump's not actually lowering number of migrants from South America. It's actually doubling. Most of the immigration is from visa overseers, not people crossing the border. I, that's actually true, though. They are in... Though, those people who are... 
who do have visas overstaying are actually in the middle of getting their citizenship, which is actually taking time because of all the blockade and such that Trump has actually done. Um, countries with the highest number of overstays in the US, Canada, over 100k, uh, Mexico, under 60k, Brazil, under 40k, China, under 40k, Venezuela's under 40k, UK and India are just... They're in the middle of 2020 and 40k. Um, the world is unlikely to stop drugs coming to the US. That is actually correct because, A, if you look at America as a whole, um, here's the thing. Drugs are actually being made in America. The illegal ones, like heroin, ice, and everything else, including party drugs that are illicit and can actually cause damage to the persons, to a person's immunity system, along with the body's function. So it can play with the heart, can play with the lungs, can play with the liver, stomach, kidney, brain even. Um, that's about it. But I'm getting to the crisis, to the border crisis. Um, let's see. U.S. immigration system is in crisis, yes. Everyone by the dramatic increase in border detentions. 144,278 in May alone. The highest number in more than a decade. This is what the New York Times reported. Yep, last week. So, the story is still new. It's like June 25th. US. Um, let's see, kids as young as seven-year-olds don't have access to soap or toothbrushes. Um, or... And many have not been able to wash their clothes or shower since they were detained. They're sleeping on concrete floors. With the lights on, lights on all night, which is stupid, really. You also have those flimsy, those flimsy blankets for hypothermia and such. They're, they're sleeping under them. They're keeping under them. It's not exactly humane to actually do so. Not to mention sleeping on concrete. I can tell you right now, I have a bad back, a low, a bad lower back, and busted knee, and locked ankle. If I slept on concrete, there is no way I will be able to get up. If I slept on the ground, there's no way I'll be able to get up, because I'll be in so much pain that you will have to call an ambulance to come and, just to come and get me, and take me to the hospital. And, of course, that alone, the humanitarian, the, uh, humanitarian, the humanitarian crisis unfolding to the South may be even more dire, which actually means that this is actually something that Donald Trump can't fix. And it's something he can't fix at all. And it's like, he's going to war with Iran. No, he's actually pulled that back. The Iran said they shot down a drone in their airspace, though it could have been over international waters as well. Because that drone was actually being, um, what was it, tracked by satellite, by US satellite and ships, so it would actually have the correct coordinates, not the coordinates that Iran actually has sent out. Because the drone could have been, because the drone could have just gone straight down over on their side and in their airspace, claiming that they've actually shot down something that was in their airspace when it was actually over international waters, because they are actually shooting at tankers and actually disabling those tankers that have oil. That's what this is all about, too. I really don't like reporting stuff like that. I don't like reviewing stuff like that, but when it's something that is actually harming fellow human beings and such, these are people who actually want a better life. I myself, I'm like, I want a better life. I can't have a better life because of my disability and such. I want to be able to share this with the whole world, saying that Donald Trump can actually be arrested under treason, treason act, along with human rights 
laws as well, because the Constitution actually state that anyone can be arrested under treason in, the, in America, because Donald Trump is actually in bed with Russia, Saudi Arabia, and North Korea. Yes, that's right. He's in bed with three of America's enemies, and he's actually wanting to take information about his opponents, and is actually inviting Russia to actually hack into the, the, the electoral computers to actually change everything. I'm sorry, but that's actually cause for impeachment as well. So I'm actually calling on the UN, the FBI, and Congress. This is for them. I am actually, I'm an Australian citizen. I am concerned about the trade war that is going on. My blinds, actually. Um, yes, that's that's the sound of my drapes as well. Um, if the trade war keeps going, it's going to escalate into collateral damage for America's allies, like Australia and such. Australia, UK, New Zealand, uh, all of Europe. Japan and everything else, though. Actually, I found video that. Excuse me. I actually found what the um, trade war would actually mean for Australia. Um, I try. So, but going back to the border war, border crisis. Now, there's been some lawyers who've actually gone to the southern border of America, and they've actually seen what is happening. Donald Trump doesn't want to even know about what's happening there. He doesn't want to, because he's scared. He is scared. That is the only reason why he is scared. Now, like I said, Donald Trump can try and say, say anything, right? He denies it, turns it around, and uses it and attacks it. He's already attacking Mexico for it. He's attacking those who actually came out against him with sex allegations. Um, hello, those sex allegations do actually stand out and can actually have a president impeached and arrested. Just have a look what happened to um, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky stuff. He had an affair with Michael Lewinsky. Done. Bye. Say up. Finish. Bye bye. Bye. Richard Nixon. He was impeached because he had um, secret recordings and such, and he wouldn't give those up. Donald Trump actually sharing secrets with America's enemies is impeachable and treason as well under the Constitution. Um, militarization of the border results in the systemic violation of human rights. So, there's that. Um, the story I'm reading actually keeps going on about, um, let's see. Oh, last 74 is located 40 miles from the border with Guantanamo. Uh, migrants who cross from Guantanamo by foot have to walk for three days to reach the shelter. They're exposed to everything on their way there. So then it's kidnapping, rape, sexual violence, homicide. Deportations from Mexico to Central America have tripled since December. As reported last month by Spanish daily Al Paris. Or Al Paris. Or is it, is it Al Paris? Pay us. I'm not entirely sure how I'm pronouncing that or such. I would like to learn different languages so I can actually say what it is, but it is actually a newspaper. 
Uh, in April, close to 15,000 migrants were deported. The highest monthly deportation rate in three years. They have no rights to them. They have no access to health care unless they're dying. They have no access to legal counsel. The authorities are supposed to give them some basic information about how to request refugee status. But they almost never do. This is what Donald Trump is actually using. He's telling the border officials to actually just don't say nothing. Don't say nothing, just turn them away. Turn them away, deport them. And it's, it's, it's stupid, really. Donald Trump is a stupid man. That's my opinion, really. Though his IQ, he doesn't show his IQ. Um, he actually lied about having bone spurs. Um, I kind of have a bone spur in my foot, on my heel, I have my left heel. I can't do nothing about it. Um, so we have um, Mexico's northern border, the increase in remain in Mexico deportations is also very concerning. They're looking at the very possibility of a huge problem in the north, in the north of Mexico. That's um, Deacon Wood, the director of Mexico Institute at the Wilson Center, a non-partisan think tank. All these people being returned to Mexico where they are going to be housed. Where are they going to be housed? How are they going to be employed? Where are the children going to be educated? How will they receive medical attention? You have all these kinds of problems that could come from that. And that's what Donald Trump doesn't understand either. Everyone else, everyone else stands it, but not Donald Trump. Um, silent syndicates who make it to the US through Mexico are only being deported to free Mexican border, border cities. Tanchecas and Perez Neres are going to Pedro Correa, an immigration lawyer at the Bronx Defenders, a public defender non profit in New York City. The increase in remain in Mexico deportations could go up from 20 per day up to 1,000. Assume that it ends up being half of that. Imagine that they send 500 people back to Mexico every day. So in two months, you will have 30,000 people in free cities that do not have the capacity to absorb them, as in education and everything else. That was only being thrown onto my bed. Um, there's also founder and director of the John Ted 2000, which is Joseph Maria Carrasa, Immigration Shelter Inter Echo Jason Concern, who explained that these cities are already hosting four types of immigrants, Mexicans from poorer or more dangerous parts of the country, Central Americans who arrive from the south of Mexico, Central Americans who have been returned from the US, returned, as in deported to that center, and not even seeing if they're US citizens. We could have problems with overpopulation at any point now. So it grows up. Um, migrants in the north of Mexico are also often victims of crime, face increasing xenophobia, according to a recent poll conducted by Al Universal, a Mexican newspaper. 61.5% of Mexicans said they agree the government should stop undocumented migrants from entering the country, up to 40, up from 48.9% in October. That same poll found that 44.4% of Mexicans think the government should immediately expel and document immigrants, up from 27.6% in that same time period. Um, so I've been robbed twice, said Carmen, a 30-year-old woman from El Salvador who made the journey north to Toronto about five months ago and is waiting an asylum hearing in the US. They don't treat us well and they're walking down the street. When we're walking down the street, we get called a lot of things, they insult us, immigrant, go back to your country. North America is USA, South America, well, I'm going to say that, I'm, I'm going to say, well, that should actually be part of America. Um, there's still more, so, uh, perhaps the worst problem is that organized crime is going to look at this as an incredible vulnerable population to be preyed upon and probably recruited as well support. Uh, they think that this is self-harm by Mexico unless they've got a plan to redistribute, redistribute the population throughout the country. If such a plan exists, it's hard to imagine how it can be executed. 
Mm, yeah, that. I'm actually trying to imagine that. That that's like it's really hard. To, there's no plan. A bunch of Mex Mexico's national migration institute was slashed by 23% in 2019, down to 68 million, and 720 jobs in the agency were eliminated. I was in charge of processing asylum visas called Coma had a budget of roughly 10 million. For perspective, perspective, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, U.S. Immigration, Customs Enforcement have a combined budget of roughly 24 billion. 24 billion dollars. Gee, I'm sure they can actually make living conditions at border at the border more better for those who are sleeping on concrete floors and having lights on all day and no access to running water and such don't you Mexico is willing to say okay we'll do what the US says it can't follow through it doesn't have the capacity to do that said Wood I think they will get a reprieve during the summer that might allow both sides to say, hey, this worked. But in the fall, the numbers will pick up again. Migrant flows are going to continue to happen as long as Central Americans... Yeah, you heard Americans. Central Americans. Are desperate to get out of their countries. Well, how about go in and help them? I mean... You have the manpower, you have the resources. Go and help them. Um, and here's another story, which is called the National Emergency. Is there a crisis in the US-Mexico border? Uh, apparently there is. Like I said, there is. It just says the same thing. So, not too worried about that. Um, here we go. Now we're getting to the... Excuse me. Scott Morrison wards of collateral damage in U.S.-China trade war. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has warned of collateral damage in the escalating dis trade dispute between the U.S. and China. Um, Prime Minister Morrison spoke in Sydney ahead of his trip to Japan for the G20 summit. Um... He spoke about the strain of the U.S.-China relationship and the impact on the rest of the world, the impact of any further deterioration of the relationship will not be limited to those two major powers. The global trading system is under real pressure. So thank you, Donald Trump, for bullshit, for all this freaking crap. Okay? Thank you. You know, I can actually have you arrested for this shit. Seriously, I'm not happy about this. People aren't happy about this trade war because it's going to put prices of electronics, cars, and everything else up. And it's like, oh, we can't pay for this. Sorry. Oh, and then it's like, the debt claim, oh, you can't pay for this? I'm taking your house, your job, your car, your freaking everything, your bank account. Say goodbye. You're homeless. Get out of here. That's what the debt collector is going to do. And then the debt collector is going to have to answer to their debt collector to say why they can't have, why can't they pay for this, this, and this. And then they get booted. They get fired. Everything that they are, they worked for gets taken off them and they're out homeless. It's going to cause homelessness. And it's going to cause a global recession where no one can pay for nothing because there's all this product but it's not being shipped. And in a nutshell, if we head to recession, no power. No power means no mobile phone, no internet, no YouTube, no music, no recharging your phones, no recharging anything like your car and such. Oh, but what about solar power? Nope. Someone comes along. Flick switch. Cuts it. Say goodbye. You're in darkness for life. You're in darkness. And then you have to try and ring. Or send an email out and such. And it's like you can't do it because you don't have no power.
And if anyone wants to read the Scott Morrison US Trade War Hell Claro Damage Trade War Policies news, I will link that in the description below. Um, China's foreign about the trade war, China's foreign minister says it hopes a meeting later this week between President Donald Trump and his Chinese counterpart Xing. Jinping will help build trust and resolve outstanding issues. Well, the only outstanding issue is Donald Trump himself. So, yeah. Though China has actually... Well, China does actually... Flaw the copyright and trademark laws... On products from Australia... And the US... Unless they don't have, um... Well, let's say China, let's say Australia, US, Japan, because of Nintendo and Sony, Samsung, Motorola, and everything else. And that those offices are in Japan. Uh, Microsoft's head office is in US. Um, a number of he other head offices that can that are in Australia and US and such. Wow. Wow, just... Yeah. So I'm just gonna put in I'm just gonna search two hundred and fifty US dollars Oh, holy fuck, mate. That's 25% in Australian dollars of the 250 billion US equals 358 billion, 312 million. He is the correct. Yeah. It's in Australian dollars. That 250 billion US in Australian dollars is actually is what I said before, which is 380 358 billion 312 million 500,000. Wrap your brains around that. And you'll actually understand why people are pissed off. Let's put that to the let's put that to the euro. Two hundred and twenty billion eighteen million seven hundred and fifty thousand euros. Yen? I think I better show you guys the yen. That's what it equals in yen. That's what it equals in yen. That's like what? Twenty six trillion eight hundred and sixty one billion seven hundred and fifty million. I'm better off saying twenty six point eight trillion yen. This is really, really starting to hurt my brain. Indian Rupal, 17.3 trillion. In Hong Kong dollar?
this is what this is what it means for everything coming out of Japan, out of um China. That's the euro, which I said before. Th and this is just electronics and such. The price is all different. Look at this. You wanna say New Zealand? Boom. You wanna say Army Rail? Army Volio? Philippine Fiesa? Yeah. That is what it means. Everyone will be paying a whole lot more. I'm going to end the video because my brain is hurting from this alone. So I'll see you all next video. I'm going to try and relax. Oh, my head. My poor brain. It is hurting.